Hello and welcome to Perspectives. Um, quick reminder, uh, your tweets, your Facebook messages, your emails, I will try to include as much as possible, but today, unfortunately, we're not live, so I will not be taking your live tweets. Um, we've jokingly said repeatedly that Pakistan is going to uh, a crucial period and Pakistan going through a crucial time. Um, there have been many crucial periods in Pakistan's history, and Pakistan has, by the grace of God, done well every time. And I'm sure it'll do good this time as well. But while the world is engaged in a war on terror, and I say the world because pretty much the whole world is engaged in this war on terror, but Pakistan is a frontline country. And the, and, the, and the point that it raises is that Pakistan is not just a frontline country. It's also the biggest taxpayer in this war on terror. By taxpayer, I mean the cost of this war on terror I think the highest bid is by Pakistan. Other countries may be spending dollars. Other countries may be providing ammunition. Other countries may be providing think tanks, ideologies, ideas, strategies, philosophies. But Pakistan is the only country which is suffering today and may be sowing the seeds for a bitter future. Pakistan is the only country in this war on terror which is being divided from within. Pakistan is the only country in this war on terror which is giving lives on a daily basis. A number which is, has now become so vague that it doesn't matter if you say 40,000, 60,000, 80,000 because there's just too many thousand. And beyond a number, it doesn't mean... It, the, the, the number means nothing. It just becomes a number. The bottom line is, it's a huge price. The families of people who are giving their lives, those who are being injured, those who are being injured and maimed forever, lives which are being disturbed, the scars that this war on terror is leaving on Pakistan is not going to disappear next year. It's not going to disappear when the U.S. leaves Afghanistan and moves on. It's not, these scars will not disappear by 2018. These children who are being raised and born in this atmosphere, in this environment, in this air, will live a long life. And they will live with these scars. So the world needs to appreciate and understand the price Pakistan is paying on this war on terror. I've invited four gentlemen who, uh, intellectual is, uh, I don't want to use that word, but who have a keen understanding of foreign relations, of internal affairs, of the way wars are had, the way uh, these matters are dealt with. And I would like to understand from them today what really Pakistan is, how really is Pakistan suffering, what really, what, what, what price Pakistan is really paying, and what, what the world needs to do in return for us. On the far right, uh, kind of retired Mukhtar Bhatt. Thanks, sir. Thank you very much. Um, uh, next to him is Mr. Zafar Lali, uh, and I would use the word an expert and analyst on foreign relations and also domestic matters. Uh, Zafar, thank you very much for taking the time out. Uh, on my left, um, Air Vice Marshal retired, uh, Abid Rausa. Thank you very much for coming. And on my far left, uh, we have Mr. Heather Mehdi, who has also had a stint in the army, but also uh, just somebody who understands life and understands parts of labor. And thank you very much for being thank here. Um, Zafran, let me start with you. If what I've said in my opening, do you agree that Pakistan is paying that heavy price and maybe the world is not really appreciating what Pakistan is giving him? I think that what you've said really hits the nail on his head. Um, whatever the reasons, we are paying this heavy price. Exactly. And a lot of the reasons have to do with, unfortunately, our own policies in the past. The fact is that today, if Pakistan goes down, or if extremism triumphs in Pakistan, mm -hmm. I think ultimately the region will go. And if the region goes, I can't believe for a minute that the world won't be affected. So, yes, we are crucial. For using a soft word, effective. <laughs> We are crucial to this war. If we win this war, it will be won or lost in Pakistan. And if Pakistan wins, then the region wins and the world wins. So 
So I think that's how important we are. Even though not many people realize this. Even though the way they act towards Pakistan is, doesn't seem uh, to show that they know the key importance of Pakistan. I mean, when you come to think of it, that here's a country like Afghanistan, and frankly, Afghanistan now, I think, is more of a geographical expression than a country. Fair point. They have been lavished with money and billions of dollars and every kind of attention. Ten years of God knows how many billions. The war has cost America a trillion. And we have got nothing, so, so to speak, in comparison. And, 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 yet, and could I say the fraction of the cost of the war would have never need to be happened? I mean, I'm if they had spent the money in, in more wisely, yes. things would have mattered much right. easier. It would have resolved much easier. Here were we a people who were willing to fight against, are willing to fight against extremism. The majority of Pakistanis are not extremists. We want, uh, we need the wherewithal. Now, I'm not saying that the world owes us a living. No, we want to fight this battle for ourselves. But if there is help to be had, and if there is one country that needs help, it's us. And look at the measly, miserly way it is being dished out to Pakistan. I'm a couple sorry. of million here, a couple of million couple, there. And yeah. for, even for that, what we have to promise and return is kind of... So it seems to me that as far as the powers that be, the people who shape international opinion and policy they actually seem to be working on a different agenda. I would go as far as to say that they think we are dispensable. And not only are we dispensable, it seems by the way some of their policies are shaped that they want us out of the way, thinking that whatever replaces Pakistan may be better for them, may be easier for them. Otherwise, there's no reason why they should, knowing what we feel, knowing what Pakistani feels, go in and publicly uh, show their uh, uh, liking and preference for people who are our enemies. So, uh, I mean, I really feel that we've had a hard deal. Zafar said that the majority is not, not extremist in Pakistan. I'd like to say it even in a stronger way. I don't think even the minority is an extremist. I think there's just a very, very small percentage of people who have taken that route and as Zafar mentioned, huge amounts of money have been, have been spent in, uh, in Afghanistan. These people who have become extremists, I'm not being apologetic here, I have no apologies about it, but if I try to figure out how to solve their problems, how to, how to turn them, the biggest weapon against extremism will be economics. Am I right, Zafar? Very correct. And the money that has been spent in other areas, if only a fraction of it, had gone to that area, we would have been done with this war a long time ago. Instead, and I would like you to take it from there, see, we uh, are being actually called the problem. Yes, quite. It is too late now to make any investment for the extremists. Okay. The reason being that they are being funded heavily from outside. They have got most sophisticated weapons and they have plenty of money to dish it out to certain people. As a result, you have seen that the entire country is flooded with these militants. Sure. They have their hideouts. And I was shocked to hear from someone that they have established their own courts in Karachi and uh, they have uh, asked them to come to them for justice. And people go there and they are getting justice. The things, they are so deep-rooted we allowed them to nourish under our own umbrella without taking any due covenants of their presence. And now it has become a menace. Now, there, is, there are no two options. The only option is either we surrender to these extremists or we fight them out. Now, to fight them out, there is basic need and requirement that all our political parties should be on one page. So, as you all know, that the entire, uh, all the uh, religious parties, uh, they have a different approach towards these extremists. 
uh, I don't think I have ever seen anybody condemning these incidents where hundreds of people die every day. Even the non-religious parties are, I mean, they don't have a solid ground against them. I mean, they don't, they, they don't take solid it stand against them. But uh, at times they do condemn these actions. Okay. At times they do condemn these actions. Now, uh, as um, uh, Zafar al-Ali Saab said that um, we have suffered a great deal, I think we have suffered a great deal true, but once the American forces withdraw, we are going to be suffering more than what we have seen in the past. The simple reason is that your army has not been able to deliver what they could have delivered. And uh, now the wrong message is being given by our chief that you cannot take Islam out of Pakistan. Who is taking Islam out of Pakistan? We have to decide. So this gives a message to the others. They get wrong perception about these statements. Firstly, there is no need for him to make political statements. Let the government uh, do its job and he should do his own job to defend the frontiers. And what is uh, Pakistan's ideology? Unfortunately, uh, over a period of 65 years or so, I have yet to see the Pakistan selecting uh, what is our objective. Every country has an objective. So what is our objective? If I, if I may speak uh, in, this, in this matter, what you said now is what I, what I was thinking about, that the reason I'm, I'm an average, all four of you have much deeper and a bigger understanding of these matters. I'm an average citizen of Pakistan. And over the years when I was much younger, I remember wanting to hear these words because all the other institutions had me completely confused. So I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not an extreme Islamist or, or, or I'm, I'm just a good Muslim, I think. But I, I would like to believe that, it's, you know, if, if people think that Islam can be pushed out of Pakistan, I don't mind hearing Mahami chief telling me that's not going to happen. No, but who is here to, uh, well, make a statement when, when but the elections are on our head? But, 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 but and in, knowing fully well that these extremists are very but active. In the absence of a vacuum. In, in, fact, in, in, the, in the presence of a vacuum. In, in the fact, absence of another stand. In fact. I wouldn't mind him taking a stand. Means he is giving a message <coughs> to those that don't worry, we are with you. And if that is the message, then I don't think that you can control the situation. I don't, I, do you see it that way, Heather? Well, I, um, I, I have a view. Sure. Uh, and the view is that there are, there are three major dimensions to the issue of the terrorism part. One is clearly the fallout of the, of the Afghan war that's happening. So there's a political dimension to that. I think the other is, and we should never forget that, that even though the name Al-Qaeda seems to have gone into the background, but there is a worldwide phenomena which has, which did target Pakistan as perhaps that country that would be taken over and become a Khilafat and all that. So there was a whole host of, of, of these forces which penetrated, came in. And then the third really is the fallout of the 79. 79 was a terrible year. It brought the Iranian revolution and it brought the Russians into Afghanistan and it started the proxy war. It was a regional it, and became the region. And really that's the sectarian and, and now we face we are facing the brunt of all this. So to, to address this, I mean I would personally look at governance as a key issue. You know when the when when Tamsab says uh, all the political parties are the same, etc. Absolutely. But, you know, why? The uh, says, no one talks to us. Of course they won't talk to us. We are, we are weak. We are corrupt. We are, we are seen as not being able to even look after our own interests. I mean, how would someone else trust us with their interests? I mean, we've really got to be corrupt. So we are hoping that May 11th will bring about some kind of a change where there is an element of strong governance and an elected government which spine can look at every institution and say, 
this is what you do and this is what you don't do. This is our domain. And really that's the way forward. Because, and, and then there is an operational aspect. You know, the Pakistan army cannot fight. It can fight counterinsurgency. It can't fight counterterrorism. Terrorism is a different aspect. So you really need a counterterrorism policy. That's called counterterrorism policy. And a force. What do you, yeah. And it's not for uh, the, the courts to, uh, you know, uh, be driven by what are seemingly uh, public interest so motors. And let all these guys get away with it. So, so, sorry. Yeah. No, please go on. So, what, what we're, what we're, what we're facing today is really, a, a, um, you know, at the governance level, you've got an economic issue. You know, I mean, the area from where this has all arisen, other than South Punjab, and that's a different story, and I'll tell you what that is. I mean, this is a, these are predatory people for hundreds of years. This is how they've lived. If you, if you look at Shah Shuja and the first Afghan war, and Amir Dos Muhammad, who defeated, uh, 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 you know, the British, and there's one doctor who survived, it's exactly the same phenomenon. It was a jihad against an, an infidel, which was the British, against Shah Shuja, who was a supporter of the... And by the way, coincidentally, Shah Shuja was a Sadhusai, and Karzai is also a Sadhusai. And so it is an amazing uh, coincidence of history. But, but the phenomenon is exactly the same. Those people would fight for Shah Shuja, and you paid them more, they'd go to meet those moments, a week later, the Brits, so this, unless and until there is some uh, economic, you know, zones that come around in this area and these people are given alternatives, they will fight. Forever. They will, oh, forever. It will go on to the And end. it has nothing to do with God, country, infidel castles. It's their vocation. It's their vocation. It's been bad for so hundreds of years. So this will go years. on till the end of time. No. No, well, it won't. As long unless, as, unless there is an alternative means. Of, of employment, of, of earning. But that's exactly what I had said when I passed it on to Mukhtar there. But Mukhtar said, no, it's too late. Uh, too late now to make any investment in these extremists. Extremists, they cannot be turned. Uh, I'd like you to comment on that. But one thing you said, that corruption, lack of governance, knows from. Is it also not true that the, that, that the very people, that I said, don't talk to us and you say, well, we're weak, they're the ones... I'm not taking any names. Yeah, yeah. They're the ones who've made us this group. The amount of meddling, steering, so money. Weak. No. We were not weak to start with. When, when you allow somebody yeah. to come into your house yeah, and I, meddle in your affairs. Yeah, but you and I didn't allow it. Well, we did. They managed, we were weak. But the world managed, I'm saying world, I'm being very safe. The world managed to do it. I, I, I disagree. I disagree. That's why I tell you why I disagree. If we allowed a military dictator, we? Pakistan, the nation, if we allowed a military dictator to come in in 1958 and rule the country for 10 years, and then we allowed another to come in and rule the country for X number of years, and allowed a third one to come in, allowed for, it is we, it is as a nation, we are suffering for the, for the, for the, for the unfortunate spineless uh, approach that we've had towards our own decay. Thrown a yub out. Why did we throw it out? Nobody threw him out. It is ten years. Lord, it was. Ayaya Khan came. Lord. Who threw you? Uh, the guy comes in, does, messes up your country, and no one says, a, you know, does anything. There's a bit twitch yeah, here. He beats people down. How, how do my nations cannot just rise? Well, you know, I mean, look. That is, no, but I mean, then, 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 for a billion years, then, person then, suffer the consequences of being uh, meek. And that's what we are doing. We're suffering the consequences of being a meek, docile nation. And therefore, we're letting these people with guns get away with it. Okay. Now, you see, uh, three of uh, the guests have, uh, you know, said everything about what's going wrong here. I'll take you a step back. We talked about the field marshals era. 1958, it takes over at a time when there was no need because the ele elections under 1956 constitution were only four months away. February 56, uh, 59, we were to hold the elections. Ayub Khan thought that if he didn't 
take over then, Army will never have a chance to rule. 1955, he is on record having said that this country can only be ruled by army. Civilians cannot rule. Why was the civil government so quiet and did not punish him for this? In the same year, 1953, he visits uh, America as commander in chief and he makes a public statement that Pakistan army is your army. Wherever it is your mission, we will go. It is understandable only from one aspect that at that time, you know, we had a fear of India invading. So we wanted military support. When Americans gave you the first tranche of uh, military aid, they wrote a letter of apology to the Indian government that, don't worry, this is only to be used against communism, not against India. Till today, the single bullet that you receive from America in aid or in, uh, you know, reduced prices is not to be used against India. They are keeping their eyes closed, although they know that India is our biggest enemy. Having said that, you come to all these dictators, army people, even when they were not in power, they influenced your foreign policy. Who are you to make a friend with? Who are you not to make a friend with? Uh, Zayalak's period has been the worst era in our history. You will be able to analyze this even 200 years later, that in our history this was the worst period. Because he took you into a war. He raised the slogans of uh, jihad in a country which is already divided on sectarian lines. Then there is the Iranian revolution, as is very rightly said, and then Saudi Arabia coming in, and we are fighting their proxy war even today. Well, this is all about the mess. Governance is poor. When these Taliban come here, I have heard this, that they are establishing uh, justice court in Karachi. What were they doing in Lal Masjid? What were Malvi Hazlullah doing in Sawat in 91, 92, 93, when the government knew that this is Tariqe Nafaze Shet Sharia Muhammadi? In the name of Sharia Muhammadi, there are 38 parties registered with the Election Commission. Which Sharia should I vote for? Which will you vote for? And also, what they were enforcing what? the government, I said, the Sharia. Fine. Okay. Why was the government quiet? Uh, one point I would like to may add. I, may, I, may, I just, may I just raise it? one flag here. As Heather said very well that we are a meek nation, we also very opinionated. Even today, as of last week, we are penalizing and questioning Pervez Musharraf for the operation on, 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 on Lal Masjid. On Lal Masjid. All his yeah. colleagues have actually dished him. <laughs> All so, so what, you, what you're saying see, is, is completely off. So see, as a nation, see, yeah, not see, just politicians at Mukhasa, then. No, not at all, yeah, not at all. As, as a nation, we, 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 see, we, 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 we the, confused about it. The debate on whether we are Muslims first or Pakistani first must come to an end very soon. Otherwise, uh, I mean, I was a Muslim. Uh, my parents migrated. Uh, we, they were Muslims even in India. Why did we come to Pakistan? We came here to become Pakistani. In Muslims in India, I mean, they are still going to the mosque. But the Muslims all over the world. All over the world. I'm saying. The question is, where is this Pakistani nationalism which has been curbed deliberately by Pakistan army, by our religious leaders, who have not let you become Pakistani? I mean, the, the, the refer to uh, uh, General Kiani's address I, now. I'm sorry. I, I mean, Islam, yes, keep it to your soldiering. When you come no, to war, you need a, you know. No, but you know, I would Islam like, Islam doesn't help in soldiering also. Well, anyway, you read something yeah, to motivate. Yeah, yeah. I think, let's, let I, mean, I want to say, yeah. and, and it is not to defend the army, but I think, you know, the army uh, has made huge sacrifices. My perspective on that uh, sacrifice is that actually people don't know when these 8,000, 10,000 people died. There are operations going on even yeah. today. For some reason, and I fail to understand why ISPR, I mean, it's not to kind of build up the army. We're just saying the people of Pakistan must know where the Pakistan army is fighting, who they are fighting, why they are fighting those people, and what are the sacrifices they are making. So at least we are able to give them some element of, of, of appreciation for, I mean, you know, 10,000 people dead. It, that we know of. That, that we know. Like, so look, yeah, right. so, so, look, so I'm, not support, I'm not saying that no, 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 we, we, we must, must support our army. Yes. But the question is, then there is a car. And there is no inquiry on that. You lose so many people. You are ro uh, labeled as a rogue army and a rogue state and a nation. Well, let the you world know. label us whatever they want. No, no, no. But is this...
what was the reason for this kind of uh, adventure? General Musharraf has said the question is operation he had won, but it was lost on the table. Why did that? So let there, there be a truth commission that can, can uh, you know, reconcile. Okay. Okay, what Mr. Navashri says, what Mr. Parvek Gusharov says. But, that, but that's not the debate. That uh, is not the debate. What I'm saying is lack of nationalism and our ability to sell ourselves cheap. Why did we give Bada Bear base to Americans in 61? Why did the U-2 fly from here and, and got shot down in Russia? Yeah, yeah, and we were labeled as... Yeah, 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 I does not agree with you. No, no, no. I, well, I, I, need, I need to take a very short break. Yeah, yeah. And, and Zafar is going to say something. I'll get this in, in a second. But I'd like to just add here, again, like Harris said, I'm not here to defend the army. But, and i like Abit to comment on more. He says, lack of nationalism is partly the army's fault. I, as a citizen of Pakistan, believe that the, whatever nationalism is actually left is because of the army. I'll leave that open to my guests to comment on. Let's take a short time. Um, the points were open. Zafar, you want to say something? I want to say two things. I don't think we are a meek people. I think we're ignorant and stupid. We are not meek. Having said that, um, he just called the Pakistani nation ignorant and stupid. Highly. Highly. I would, I, I I would add the adjective. No, but I protest. You can keep protesting, take a flag and march it up and down the studio if you like, but uh, that's what I feel. Okay. We are not meek. Unfortunately, unfortunately, it meek is a person who understands the situation and adopts a particular attitude towards a particular situation. Fair point. We are ignorant. Now, I want to come to what he said, which is a very important point. I was present in 1973 in the Islamic summit. In fact, I was the note taker of Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto for that summit. In other words, every meeting that he had, which was official and which was with the head of state, I had, I was, my job was to record that meeting. I also know who wrote the speech uh, which he gave on that occasion. And one of the lines of that speech I recall very well is, the armies of Pakistan, the army of Pakistan is the army of Islam. Right? Fine. Which Islam? The armies of Pakistan are the armies of the Saudi king to protect him against his own people. That's what it was said for at one time. The armies of... Which is the Islam that you are protecting? Make up your mind. Let me add one thing. Is there any... Muslim country out of the 57 countries whose army will come to defend us? <laughs> so, no, no, exactly. And number two, no. who is fighting who today in the world? It's not the Christians. It's not the... the it's who okay. fighting in Syria. That, that, was, that was my initial point, uh, that the price we have paid, nobody's going to come, come and protect us. Even, yes. even those close to us, supposedly, are seeing us poorly. Are seeing us poorly. They are protecting their own interests and national which is, interests. And this is approval. Why do we have to volunteer but, our army as the army of Islam against but, but that's the, the army? He is, no, no, my friend, maybe the 70s, of course, it's rhetoric, it's nothing. But sometimes these sentences stick in the people's mind. And I've seen so many commentaries on that. You know, I half the whole orientation of the army, it, you know, it's a bit like rum. The, the British gave their sailors rum before battle. The way we use this, it's like giving them a dose of Islam 
before five yeah, minutes, so that you no, back no, up your no, no, and no, 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 but I'm uh, 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 sorry. Uh, wash uh, with the uh, sophisticated. Uh, well, thing. all no, 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 countries no, no, use on. different things. I mean, nationalism no, no. is also one of the. But that is that is nationalism. But that is also excuse me, nationalism. I agree. No, but nationalism is linked to Islam. I'm sorry, I have to take that position. Yes, I don't have to, but you're right. You know, I think one one. I mean, you don't agree with it, but no, no, I agree with it. Our nationalism is linked. Islam, we are predominantly, but why, what, no, why not? We are a Muslim, we are the Islamic sure. Republic of Pakistan, we say so every sure. day. Okay, but the, why but, must you? No, but, but the, none of the battles we are fighting, especially with India, is really a religious base. Not at all. Not at the, all. The, the dispute starts on the religion. Yeah, because, we should say, when are we going to pass on army against Bhatti Shaheed? The first no, 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 uh, uh, Mahavir Sakhar Begay. But, 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 but you're missing uh, my point. You're missing my point. Our dispute with them started on religion, that's how we separate it. It really is deep down somewhere, and how can we split away? We got whatever we wanted to, and you that's want to fine. continue with the enemy. But, the, I mean, this is, but the fight goes on. No, 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 I, no, I, I, I just have one one perspective. Uh, when we, you know, we use the word army so loosely, and we just lump all these people into one. I think it's a very clear distinction we must draw between. The few people Thank who uh, took over the government of this of this country versus the rank and file which make up 99% of this army, which has nothing to do with government. But they don't count. You yourself. No, 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 no. So when we say the army did this and the army did that, you know, we we are really uh, also attacking. People who have actually nothing to do but with with governance. All the field marshal and generals use the strength <laughs> of the common soldiers. Yeah. I agree. So, but the co- but the there is no, 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 no. You can't escape being a general and give a view. The, 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 the army is not associated. But I'm telling you, woe betide the day when your rank and file decides not to obey the command. Of your command, I'm, I'm honestly telling you. There will be two bad days. There will be two bad days. That will be happen. the day I no, don't would, would even not even want to contemplate what's going to happen when X brigade says I refuse and Y brigade. But your brigadiers did. did refuse to Sorry? fire. Your brigadiers refused to fire. We have we have gotten system. completely distracted into the history of, of where way. certain people have partly nego- negotiable, but. Yeah, 80% sweeping statement, you can make they made a mistake. Individual, Individual acts. acts. But, Does not start but, but in, our, in, our, in our quest for liberalism or secularism, both words, I, I like both the words, uh, we can't dissociate from our core philosophy. I like to believe our core Please philosophy. Please have it uh, dictated. And it's but it's not the question is, when you in case of Pakistan, you cannot, you religion is a domestic factor. You it is not a uniting factor. You it is absolutely but true. But it isn't made that. In the name yeah. of religion, we yeah. are disintegrating yeah. whether we were created in the name. It's an Islamic state, Pakistan, Islamic Republic of Pakistan. The Muslim state, we are all Muslims, the followers of Islam. But I think we overplay this yeah. Islam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who say exploit it? I think just yes. for our own. Yeah. You know, but that is what is to be guarded. I think I think the political forces use it use it worse. They have made yeah. I, protection yeah. of ideology yeah. responsibility. Yeah. Sure, but yeah. in yeah. India, yeah. has that been officially removed? No, but they've been various civilian governments who should have overruled it. It's should have. an insult to the people to think they will give up their religion. Why are you so scared of the people? Who's asking to give up their religion? No, but why are you keep protecting Islam? No, 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 and equal number unregistered. I'm talking more registered than 20,000 marks. And that means that people are all religious people and they go to offer their prayers and learn their Quran and all that. Nobody's saying that. Yeah, but at the same time, corruption has never been more and perjury is not a crime. 
I mean, there's a direct correlation, you know, to the amount of people, it seems, who go to mosques and the amount of mosques we had, but that is not, and the corruption and the lying and the thieving that's going on. But that has nothing to do with the religion or the people of Of course it doesn't. That's why I say, why mention it? No, why, so not why not mention it? No, I mean, it is under because it is divisive. It is I, I have a view on this. I think the core issue, as is always is, for thousands of years, is social and economic. Whenever a society is socially or economically, or wherever a segment is socially economically deprived, it will latch on to anything that gives it a bit of hope, and it will be hijacked by smart people, either with beards or without beards, doesn't matter what they are, with a message and rally people around and say, you have been victimized because of X, Y, and Z. In the name of religion, it's the most powerful force. Hatred is a powerful force. That person, Zafar Hiladi, has taken your uh, right. Karim Mukhtar has taken your right. That is the reason we can't allow this force to take over the hearts and minds of the country and, and hold us hostage. But may I, may I, may I, I just would like to comment on this. I agree. I cannot disagree with you. But that has, again, nothing to do with either the armed forces or, no, not the religion, religion. Yeah. or religion or having a core philosophy or hanging on to religion or re-invoking religion every now it and then. Or it does. Hear me. The whole divisive thing, once again, unfortunately, has been injected into us by our glorious friends. We, I, you cannot deny sure. that they've had... The people who've injected it here were they on their behest anyway. They were not there. They, I didn't elect them. I didn't put them there. So there is a way forward. Let's let's look at a way forward. There is a way forward. The way forward will not come from external. We can cry forever at the top this of our problem we have to deal with. That America has done this to us, and that country has done that to us, etc. They will do what they have to do in their own interest. We have to do something that is our our interest is. We must govern ourselves well. You start. Uh, providing equal opportunities of employment, of health care, of education, of infrastructure, of law and order. We know all that. He says, but that will be doing. No, no, we, we can. But it's not Islam's fault. It's, it's, it's not people's weakness it's of people. No, no. Why can't we do it? We can. And all we need is somebody sensible enough at the top of the stairs. No, but why do these people keep electing teams? And I'll tell you why. Because. Here is, here is the problem. The 2008 elections, just look at the numbers. Mr. Zadari gets elected, People's Party, 124 seats by garnering 13% of the registered vote. Mm -hmm. Mr. Nawaz Sharif gets 94 seats by getting 8.9% of the registered vote. Mr. Shadar Hussain gets 54 seats by getting more than Nawaz Sharif, by the way. He gets 10%. These guys get more than two-thirds, three-fourths of the seats, they get elected 33% of the then we, Why don't we recognize this system as a representative? Because, or I'll tell you why, because the people who have, the, 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 the people who got a stranglehold on this system know that if this system breaks, where do they go? Where do the Lagardis and the Chaudhary so or the Bikes have a stranglehold of the system? They have, they right? have. You admit that. So, of course, and then I tell you, the only Islamic crooks. crooks. The only Islamic crooks. No, 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 and we as Muslims practice all these things. But that's fine, but no, he's talking about the electoral system. No, 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 no you have to have plurality, 50%, have a directly elected president, allow that person to appoint a cabinet. Who will do this? A 
So the you, you, you're talking about a major constitution. You have to. Who will do it? That is a very good question. Who will do it? There was a there was a there was a conversation. There was a conversation. See, Mr. Ideas come through conversations. Conversations. Yes, I know that we are unsuited to parliamentary democracy. First past the post, because I've seen these numbers, which you rightly say, all the time. Actually, all these. And just finish by saying, uh, we see these numbers all the time. We see the psyche of our people. Right. We know that a presidential system is better, where you can have competent advisors chosen, regardless of where exactly. they are, or you know where they come from, or whatever. But we don't do it, and and that is the way forward. And okay, uh, I'd like to endorse Heather here. I'll tell you why we don't do it, because first, frankly. After the freedom of media, and we, we actually sitting on Fox and Television having this discussion. I think we should salute the, the state. Yes, yeah. Um, uh, we the, the proposal of a presidential system. We've only started talking about about three years ago. No. We, we haven't talked in your circle. This one thing coming out in public mass discussion. You know why we are doing this? You're right, Faisal, but you're wrong. The Democrats who've been elected. Have acted as if it's a presidential no, system. But Dari no, has saying, no power, well, but saying, has all the power. No, but I'm saying something else. What what Heather said, this conversation will event. You said who will do it? Once enough public opinion through this time. discussion, of course we have time. No, I would not much time. One thing. We don't have time. Not we much. have not much time. Our no. these elected no. members are not the true representatives of the people of Pakistan. Of course. उटर They have no business to rule the country. No, 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 no. It's our fault if we don't vote. No, but we are uh, still holding the election. I mean, it's not an election. No, no, no. I mean, there is a fundamental flaw in the system. The only way to know. Thank you. Make it compulsory. Sure, but we can't keep no. holding elections. No, no, no. Whatever becomes you, the party must have 51 percent. To govern the country, but if they don't, they will make. Oh, well, you will, you will, you, will, you know. We are once again having. The people make a question. The point that that thing happens. You are once again having all the looters and plunderers. Yeah. So, 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 so what you're saying is, at this election, 48 percent people turn up to vote, and nobody gets beyond 51 percent, which probably nobody will. We should have an election again in four weeks. Yes, so and keep doing sense. that. No, keep but doing. Somebody will. Uh, we can't do that. The people that's will that's come right. forward and change the pattern. People who don't power to change the. And I'm sorry, I believe in system. You see, uh, it's, uh, it's strengthening my own belief that Bangladesh and Zambia, our own election commission did that. That uh, they prohibited asking for votes in the name of religion. Yeah. And all our religious parties opposed, and some others also, that uh, Pakistan was created in the name of religion. Yeah. But Pakistani nationalism is a uniting force. Everybody, whether he lives in Spain, Balochistan, Punjab, is a Pakistani. But when there are these religious parties and some of these political parties which also support certain sectarian activities, uh, people get divided. That even you think you should preface your argument by saying that the religious parties oppose Pakistan on the same grounds that they are not supporting Pakistan. Exactly. So uh, having to allow a religious party. To take part and maybe one day become a prime minister in the cabinet or in the government doesn't it defy what Mr. Jena said? No theocracy in Pakistan. Yeah. Uh, uh, Abhi, I'm, I'm religious I'm, leader. I'm in politics. In uh, the uh, Abhi, I'm, I'm, I'm forced to say that if the nation has evolved in a certain way and if it elects, Iran was a kingdom and now is probably. Then there was Abdullah Khomeini. And he no, no, had no, no. all the clear sure, with him. Sure, sure. But they yeah. did turn. They did. So if Pakistan, I'm not saying it should or it would, but if it does, hypothetically, who are you and I to say all the? Let the people decide. decide. Let the people decide. People are deciding by vote. No people. Let me say all the 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 vote. People, people are confused are. when you talk of. Uh, but it's people's fault to be confused. They should be clear. You know, when you talk of ideology of Pakistan, I would like to ask ten parliamentarians randomly. What do they know about it? 
because there is no written document. Okay, my perspective is there is no written document. There is no written document. It does matter. It does matter. It does matter. It does matter. Yeah, it does, it does matter. It does matter. Ma uh, <laughs> this, is, this has become a very interesting discussion. And I need to take it towards closure. We're running out of time. I know, I know. No. I, I think the, you know, I, I'm a practical, well, we're all very practical people. You know, you have to take certain specific steps to set things right. I think the, election, the electoral system is flawed. The electoral system is flawed and it will continue to elect the same people. I mean, Imran Khan has suffered grievously in the last two, three weeks, even though I like the guy, uh, because he was forced to give tickets to people who were so-called electable. The system is flawed because these, system, these people get elected, no, they, then they come into par no, just let me just say, they come into parliament, problem. they come into parliament, they have to be either made ministers or. If the system is changed, and I say with a big if, and it has to change to allow local government, to allow a presidential form of government to appoint technocrats who are no longer specialists, specialists like Nabal al and he comes and becomes the foreign minister and then gets vetted by the Senate or the Parliament. All I can say is that the Election Commission of Pakistan had a wonderful opportunity on this occasion. They had the laws. You know, by the way, we need no extra laws. Every we law have, we have whatever laws. Every, every law exists. We don't need another single law. We don't need a legislature anymore. Just implement the bloody laws that are in stir at the moment. Sure. The Election Commission could have this non-tax payer. Hmm. If you don't have your tax number, that means you have no intention of paying Absolutely. tax. Absolutely. So if you have no intention of paying tax, and you're living and you're earning and you're having a car, where's the... Where's so the they have the opportunity to do it. Let me give you a slight example. This country's Never economy has been taken over now 90% by the black economy, not 50%. 90% by the I black economy. I would add economy. that the election commission of Pakistan has failed miserably to come up to the expectations of the people. Now, by not enforcing the laws tightly. Yes, not forcing. It? it is now 180 million people of Pakistan they should open their eyes and elect good people who can change their face and take the country to progress and prosperity. If the same looters and plunders are elected, then people have no right to come on the streets. Sir, those are Bara uh, Sikho. Uh, uh, sir, sir, sir Abit, I may just add one thing that elections must be held, no matter what cost we pay till 11. Good point. Number one. Number two, one point I think uh, we've generally missed uh, historically. That when a party is elected, they have a registered manifesto with the election chairman. Should they not implement in the first two years a bigger portion of that, or should they not be seen yeah, going in that direction? Manifesto is very general. They no, no, no. Uh, for example, Roti Kapla Makan, if it's... Yeah, yeah, but that's a very categorical. No. I mean, that's a very... Should the election commission... Take some action. They are uh, you lied. Yes, you lied on that. Thank you very much, all of you. Um, this is the price Pakistan is paying. The confusion, uh, the, 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 the chaos in our own minds. Uh, before I leave, I would just like to tell the people of Pakistan and the people of the world. People of Pakistan, I would say, vote. Go insane voting. No matter what happens, as Abid said, no matter what goes on, stand together, stand united, vote. For so whoever you want. You want to vote, vote the religious parties, the right wing, the left wing, whoever you want to vote, vote. Let the world know that 80, 70 percent of Pakistanis have cast a vote. And this is what you want. Whatever is what you want is your prerogative. And the world needs to understand that Pakistanis, and I must say Pakistan, Pakistanis are not what the world has labeled us as. We are, we may not agree. We would question our army. We would question our religious parties. We question our politicians, sometimes aggressively. This is who we are, and we are not mindless, senseless nomads living in the desert. We are an intelligent nation. We know how to run our country. Just let us do that and give us the support, practical support, the economic support, the infrastructure support that we need, and we will be a country that you would have to respect. Thank you.